This is our third review in a row with PSA guns. And today we have a 300 Blackout Jackal. Uh, this is a left hand charging, and but you can move your charging handle to either side, uh, M-Lock handguard, but it's a 300 Blackout 10.5 inch barrel and a one in seven twist. Actually, this is a 8.5 inch barrel, one in eight twist 300 Blackout. I like one in five twists and I like shorter barreled 300 blackouts. Uh, typically they are quieter and a one in five twist is the optimum barrel twist for a 300 blackout to get maximum expansion with a lot of the Lehigh defense and discrete ballistics loads, which are great for hunting. Regardless of that, today we will review pound for pound this Jackal. So it's a non-reciprocating charging handle it's ambidextrous, so you can move it to either side. It's got a brass deflector here, no forward assist. Internally, it kind of looks like an AK. It's got a top spring, very similar to an AK. So the recoil spring is in the back and it goes into the bolt carrier group. And it has an AK inspired piston. It does have an adjustable gas block here. Uh, we'll be messing with gas throughout the video. We'll start on position one. I didn't read the manual, so I don't know if position one is all the way open or really closed. Either way, we will run it. Uh, during zeroing, we are running an Aimpoint T2 on our very own Anvil Manufacturing 1.93 high optic mount. And we are also running our very own Link Sling Light. This is our lightweight sling that we sell on our website. We have a Dead Air Sandman L. Actually, this is a Sandman S. This is in the flat dark earth configuration, which is kind of like inspired off of the, the Navy guns that they came out, uh, the, the Noveski and Dead Air uh, Navy rifles. So we're running that can. Uh, the Sandman L itself is not the most quiet can, but I've also noticed with 300 Blackout subsonic ammo, the shorter the barrel, it's actually quieter with subsonics, at least with the SIG MCX series, the Rattler is the quietest with the SRD 7.62 QD can, even compared to the 6.75 with the 11 or 12 baffle stack cans for the SD handguards. So 300 Black is, is unique, it's cool. It's a very versatile round. Uh, there's tons of different flavors, different grain weights, super subs, whatever, Sabo expanders. So today we're gonna be using SIG Sour 220 grain subsonic ammo. It's a really good standard 220 open tip hollow point. It doesn't expand that much, so it's not necessarily a good round to shoot things with. I mean, maybe pigs, but it doesn't expand that well. And in a 10.5 inch barrel with a one in seven twist, its expansion is very, very low. So not the greatest ammo to like, you know, shoot moving objects with, but uh, for the sake of this, it's a pretty, consistent and quiet ammo. And uh, we'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, so in, in terms of sound suppression, this gun is not gonna suppress like the MCXs do. But it's nice, it does have a one, two, three, four, five, six position gas valve. So we'll run it, we'll run it in each position. Do what runs best. Uh, so we'll be looking for gassing, we'll be looking for bolt speed, and we'll be looking at a little bit of ejection uh, and kind of find that happy medium to, you know, soft felt recoil versus something that's running really hard. Uh, things I noticed during zeroing is the recoil spring and the weight of the bolt. It's a very heavy bolt. And it has almost like a, a lag to the bolt return. Uh, I didn't have any issues with rounds being picked up off the magazines but it definitely was a little slow uh, for the bolt return. So again, that's something that we'll keep an eye on today while we're testing it. Anyway, let's get started, put some rounds down range and uh, start messing with gas. I'm gonna just crank it straight to the fifth posi fourth position. Oh, 
God, that's like sandpaper. Fresh, uh, fresh anodizing on these. Woo! Felt recoil was a little stiff on the first position. A little bit more sluggish, but it's softer. Let's keep moving. A little too slow. You hear that? Oh, yeah. That is a tight magwell. So because these are subsonics, we're gonna go not all, not full gas, but one open. Bolt returns a lot nicer. It's not as sluggish. A little bit more felt recoil. So I'd probably say position one or uh, position two or three is not bad with these subs. All right, I'm gonna jam up some mags, but so far, because it is a long stroke piston, very similar to an AK, there's your gas block up here. And it is exposing itself and venting itself through these ribs in the front of the handguard. Not a lot of gas at me, the shooter. It is windy today, but the wind is kind of toilet bowling here. The gas is not bad whatsoever at me, the shooter. It's running. Chonky boy. Ah! All right. Ooh, that's that bad mag. Still runs though. It's just fat. Getting hot. Handguard's starting to get pretty warm, not terrible. So there's another 120 rounds through it. Can starting to bake off all the old shit. Can still looking pretty good. Timing looks right. Doesn't look like anything's loosening up. That was 360 rounds so far through the gun. No malfunctions. It's running. We'll uh we'll crank the gas all the way down and see. See how terrible it is. I think this is as close as we can get. Yeah, all the way to the right. All right, dead trigger. Failure to, failure to feed. Again, not a problem with the gun. We are just fudging with the gas settings. Uh, slower bolt return, slower bolt speed, but like mm, nice little arc, perfectly ejected arc of, of ammo. It's getting hot again. All right. All right, dead trigger, failure to, it fed. It fed, but I think it was a light primer strike. Try it again on that gas setting. All right, it 
runs, a little hiccup. I don't know, that gas setting's kind of sweet. Super slow bolt return, but it's a soft shooter. All right, so that would be, <coughs> that's position four. I think I saw out a bug. Fucking black flies, dude. <laughs> The PSA Jackal, 300 black, six position gas block. I think three and four might be my two favorite gas settings for a subsonic 220 SIG ammo. Again, we're running that Dead Air Sandman L. Our very own Anvil Ukon optic mount for the T2 and our Link Light super lightweight sling. It runs, it runs great. Typically your 500 round count is your breaking period on guns. That's when you typically see your malfunctions as the gun breaks in. Gun ran fine. We're getting some nice carbon buildup on the charging handle and bolt carrier group. It was still cycling absolutely fantastic all the way up to the end. Only issues that we really had were magazine related. I mean, bang for your buck for this firearm. Um, I don't know what the MSRP is, but I know it's really affordable. So was it sub a, sub a thousand bucks? You're getting a pretty nice little build. It's got M-Lock handguard, full length monolithic Picatinny upper receiver. Very MC-esque. <laughs> There's a pun. Got to do your puns now that I'm a dad. MC-esque. Yeah, hey, it runs. I do wish it came in a slightly shorter barrel configuration with a one in five twist for some of the hunting loads for expansion for subsonic for 300 blackout. But other than that, as a constructive criticism for the platform, as this platform eventually does evolve, uh, yeah. Nice little, nice little uh, gun to beat up at the range target shoot. I'm sure you can hunt just fine with it. And I would definitely like to test some different cans out and see what's quietest with subs. And, and you know, eventually run some supers through the gun. But for the sake of this short, quick and dirty review, PSA did a good job with it. There's still only one 300 blackout that will live forever rent free in my head and my heart. That's this bad Larry. Actually, this is a 8.5 inch man. One and eight twist, 300 blackout.